Good evening, everyone. Our meeting is going to be called to order. And August 30, August 23rd, 2022. We will say that every, everyone stand please for the Pledge of Allegiance. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Just for the Thank you. And now, uh, Mrs. Sugars, can we have roll call, please? Mrs. Arroyo. Here. Mrs. Stratton. Here. Mrs. Fleischer. Here. Mr. Mayor. Dr. Rood. Here. Ms. Stern. Here. Mrs. Tong. Here. Mrs. Winters. Here. Mr. Avadia. Okay, so um, we just had of our fir very first meeting, uh, Mrs. Winters, who is uh, now joined our Board of Education, Gina Winters. So we want to um, recognize that um, Gina was, Mrs. Winters was sworn in last Friday, oh, thir Thursday, last Thursday. So, um, so we're very excited to have you. And now we have a full um, nine board member board of education. So welcome, Gina. This is Winters. And uh, Ms. Stern, just to remind folks, um, so Ms. Stern, I'm sorry. So Ms. Winters is filling the seat that was vacated um, when Ms. Friedel stepped down. Ms. Winters will remain in this board seat uh, through the end of December and until the reorganization meeting in January. Uh, and then this board seat will be up for election in November um, as it was originally scheduled for. Thank you, Dr. Malash. So uh, Mrs. Winters, we're excited to have you. And um, it looks like we do not have any presentations tonight. Um, so we will go on to administrative reports, and I'm going to guess that might be Dr. Malash and Dr. Morton with the road forward. It is. Thank you, Ms. Stern. Um, Dr. Morton just had an update with his road forward committee. Um, so we asked him to do just a brief update for the community and for the board uh, about where we are uh, as we prepare for the opening of the academic year. So Dr. Morton, um, I was thinking as, as I was getting ready for the board meeting tonight, you know, we're, we're just a year out from uh, when Dr. Morton was delivering these updates at every one of the board meetings um, and relatively substantial as there was a lot of information coming at us very quickly last summer um, and how much the discussion has changed as we are here late in August in 2022. So Dr. Morton, it's all you. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Dr. Malash. Uh, yes, what a difference a year has made. Uh, I guess I felt moving into this role, maybe I was just thrown into the frying pan and if I was able to make it through that, Everything else is smooth sailing. So, <laughs> so yes, very, very different uh, set of circumstances uh, as it relates to the road forward. But as we always uh, had done in the past, we and we customarily like to do, we, we like to uh, make sure that we are focused uh, on our district's commitments um, for every meeting. And as we begin to open the school year up again, uh, again, the health and safety of students and staff members, very important for us and something that we're extremely proud of was regularly scheduled school days for all students every day last year. We wanna continue with that uh, trend and ensure that that is the case again uh, for this year coming up. So the committee met on uh, August 18th. It was uh, another excellent meeting. Uh, Row forward committee is an outstanding uh, group of diverse individuals. Uh, we focused primarily on executive order number uh, 302. Essentially what that order, speaks to is the uh, testing requirement for unvaccinated uh, employees. So that mandate for testing unvaccinated employees has been lifted. Uh, so you'll see that mandatory testing has been relaxed. Uh, we also discussed uh, the New Jersey Department of Health's recommendations that were issued on July 6th. And as part of those recommendations, again, I think the, the big theme is that uh, mitigation protocols that have been in, in effect in the past uh, have been heavily, heavily relaxed. Uh, masking will again be voluntary here for us uh, in, in district. Um, with that said, 
you know, we support the choice of individuals to mask or not to mask. Um, we, we support either one of those decisions. Um, plan spoke to, you know, just to, con to continue to maximize airflow, ventilation and outdoor spaces, though proximity uh, requirements are, are not necessarily being emphasized this year. It's just as it's good practice uh, to maintain proper ventilation and airflow. Again, we continue to recommend um, that individuals get vaccinated. Um, we, can, we continue to recommend <clears throat> daily self screenings. I think, you know, similar to the common cold or the flu or anything, if an individual is sick, they should not be in school around other people where they're contagious. Uh, in the event that an individual does test positive, there still is, there still are rather exclusion guidelines. So a positive test with its with a disclosure, it calls for a five-day exclusion. Uh, students would return to school with a mask on day six through 10. Uh, I know there have been many questions about emergency remote instruction or, or hybrid learning in the event that uh, an individual has to uh, be excluded. And yes, it, it still will be available this year. The district still will provide that. Um, again, recommendations for good hygiene. Uh, it's always positive to wash one's hands uh, frequently and often. Just other additional thoughts that and additional notes that were discussed. Uh, questions about PPE. Are, are PPE uh, materials still gonna be available? The answer is yes. Um, I believe the district has plenty of supply still uh, in district, and if individuals choose to to utilize any PPE devices or materials, they will be available. Uh, we continue to monitor the Cali reports, the COVID nineteen activity reports that come out. Um, at this point, you know things have, are moving in a great direction, but we'll continue to monitor that and adjust accordingly if necessary. Uh, additionally, I think the district still has a requirement to report information to the county, uh, just in terms of being confirmed with, with uh, Ms. Weatherington. That is correct. All right. But other than that, I think that, that, that's about it. Uh, short and sweet. Any questions? Mrs. Fleischer. Um, thank you, Dr. Moore. I really appreciate it. Sorry, I missed the meeting. I was um, actually moving my son, my East graduate into his uh, college last week at the, on that day. So that was exciting, but I awesome. did miss the first meeting. Um, so I did have um, a quick question. Could you give the guidelines of what the emergency remote instruction, like the, the guidelines of which parents and teachers are going by for that? Yeah, so at, so at this point, we're, we're still abiding by what was written in the plan from last year. I think it was, we said uh, one to three, within one to three days, the um, hybrid instruction or remote instruction would be set up and arranged for uh, for children. So that still is the protocol. Perfect. Thank you. Other board members have any questions? And then, uh, I'm sorry, I think. I just want to make sure another board members have any questions first and then, okay, all right, Aiden. Sorry, I just had a question a few students had asked me. Um, I know last year locker rooms were closed and students did not change for gym at middle and high school as um, in previous years great they did. Question. Do you know if that has changed? Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, locker rooms are open. We there, there are no restrictions that the district has placed on the use of locker rooms, the use of lockers, um, gatherings at events and things of that nature. It's, it's full steam ahead, all right? And, and Ms. Fleischer, just to mention as well, uh, so we have to submit an annual report on our emergency and virtual uh, instruction plan. It's actually due to the state on the 30th, but it's gonna be consistent with, with what we had done last year. We, we thought it worked pretty well. Perfect, thank you so much, Dr. Martin. And it will be board, appro board approved, I'm being told uh, <laughs> in my ear. <laughs> so we'll, we'll submit it. <laughs> For your approval. Okay, any other final questions or comments from board members? Perhaps, okay. So Dr. Morton, thank you very much. Um, that was a great update. And we will move on to board member correspondence. Does anybody have any correspondence to share? Uh, 
Um, so I have a quick one. Um, I got a chance to be part of the uh, food distribution last week at East um, last Wednesday. Um, I was, I came one hour in and I, my understanding is that the first hour was very, very busy. There were a lot of people. People were waiting for 15 minutes in line, but it, everything was very well organized, very well coordinated. The line moved fast and um, there were delicious strawberries and lots and fruits and vegetables um, available and food. And it was, a um, for me, it was just a lovely experience. Um, I cannot say how, I just can't say how great it was. I mean, the, the Aramark staff were phenomenal, absolutely knew what they were doing on their game, um, keeping me on my game when I was trying to make sure I was helping rather than hurting um, in, in, in uh, volunteering. So um, it was a great experience. And um, I understand Mrs. Winters, I believe you're going to be there next week. Um, and hopefully one of us will be there tomorrow. So uh, that's it. And Ms. Turner, just a reminder for folks, um, and I appreciate you being out there. And we've had a number of board members that have had the opportunity to be at the meal distribution. We have two more Wednesdays, tomorrow, the 24th of August, uh, and next Wednesday, the 31st of August, from noon to 2 p.m. over at High School East. Bring your recyclable bag, whatever shopping bag that you're using when you're doing your regular grocery shopping. And the food has been fantastic. Um, great fruits and vegetables, as you talked about. We want to see people continuing to go out and take advantage of it. Um, you know, to, to get those meals. We've continued to increase the numbers of meals distributed every week that we've done it. Um, so we appreciate everybody being out there and we will look for people tomorrow um, and next Wednesday. So the 24th and 31st, last two Wednesdays, noon to two at High School East. Okay, thank you so much. And if that is all we have from correspondence, we'll move on to our student representatives. And I believe I have been told that it is Aiden who will go first tonight. If I got that right, I hope I did. <laughs> so I was, I missed the last meeting. So hopefully I'm right. Sure. Okay. So hi, uh, I'm excited to be here with another student report from East. Uh, it'll be brief as summer's wrapping up and look forward to school starting two weeks from today. Um, for summer activities, we have continued learning opportunities going on at East uh, with college essay and application workshops for seniors and orientation sessions for freshmen having happened recently. There are also ongoing athletics with practices and scrimmages taking place for the upcoming fall sports season. And many of our clubs are also back to work from uh, robotics to marching band. And you can check that out on the at CHE activities Instagram. They just posted some photos from uh, club activities today. Um, to prepare for the upcoming school year, East students should be continuing to work on their summer reading, which is on chclc.org under the academics tab. Uh, also schedules should be coming out soon. So keep your eye on Genesis and uh, on that for the annual forms for parents to fill out as well. Uh, no updates on policy or student voice matters. And uh, that's all for tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Aiden. And Liz from High School West. All right, I will also be keeping it brief tonight as the summer is wrapping up. So for academics, the guidance department offered help with college applications to rising seniors on August 3rd and August 18th. Summer reading books are available at the Cherry Hill Public Library, online books online and at the local bookstores in Cherry Hill. And the ninth grade orientation sessions are on August 29th, 30th and 31st. And we're so excited to welcome the class of 2026. In activities, Marching Band held their annual Marching Band Camp at West to prepare for the upcoming season. And their first competition is on September 17th and we wish them good luck. Cheerleading also held their camp on August 18th. West football has their first home game on August 26th against Clearview at 6 p.m., which is this week. Fall sports registration was due on Monday morning as each sport began their preseasons. For more information on the paperwork and activity fee, I'm sure many coaches will still be very welcoming for any student who would like to join. School planning sessions have ended for the summer as teachers and staff and students have met to discuss planning for the upcoming school year. And our senior class government is beginning to organize many activities for the 2022-2023 school year. 
The first school is to hold a senior sunrise on the West Turf on the first day of school. For more updates, follow their Instagram at chwest2023. Our peer leaders will be going to the YMCA camps of, in the Pines for a retreat on August 28th, and they will also be helping out during freshman orientation. And as Board of Education representatives, Emily and I want to reach out to the community to be as open and as inclusive as possible. So we have established an email for any comments, questions, or concerns, which you can find on our Instagram at chwestvoereps. And we're excited to start the new school year. I am personally. <laughs> Thank you, Liz. That's exciting. Um, do you want to share the email address publicly here? Yes, of course. Um, it's at ch. Uh, sorry, it's not at. It's chwestboereps at gmail dot com. Great. Thanks. I just want to write that down. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, that brings us to our first public comment. There will be two opportunities for public comment this evening. The first public comment session is for board action items only, which are items 12 through 15. There will be another public comment section on any topic at the end of the meeting. If you are a student in the district, you may comment on any agenda item during the first public comment period. If you are a student, please identify yourself as a student. And if you're um, on the line remotely, um, it would be great if you could put S at the end of your name so that we would know you're a student. And with that, we'll open first in the room to public comment, and then we'll go to the line. I apologize. I didn't finish reading the rest of my thing. So before you start... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. No, you can stay there. I'm sorry. Um, I This is my first time running the meeting myself. So everyone's grace, I do appreciate. Um, so if just, and if you could please um, identify the agenda item you're speaking on, state your name and your municipality, um, and the timer will be up on the screen. And just to remind everybody, we always make the statement that Cherry Hill is a community that values education and educational topics often bring out a passionate response. The Cherry Hill Board of Education supports a school climate in which our diversity is a source of strength and all are included. Respect is foundational in how, in how we treat you and how you treat each other and how we support our administration and staff and their essential work. Please join us in practicing the utmost respect for all. Thank you for your patience. Please go ahead. Ann Einhorn, Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Is this on? Okay. Um, item 15.5, the student advocate at West, the leave of absence from September the 1st through December the 30th. Do we have someone in place to help the kids during that period? And I would like to thank the East Musicians on Call Club donation for their instrument, um, for their program and their donation for donating instruments to the elementary school students um, as a parent of an instrumental school teacher, um, it's near and dear to my heart. So I really appreciate what these students have done for the elementary students. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, we have one hand up on the line. If you could please state your name, your municipality, and the agenda item you're speaking on tonight. My name is Jeff Potowitz, and I'm talking about 13.7, approval of readopting curriculum, adopt and approve to align with New Jersey learning standards. I am specifically taught speaking to the addition dated June 2020 to the New Jersey Learning Standards Comprehensive Health and Physical Evaluation under performance expected by the end of grade five, 2.1.5 SS pound three. Demonstrate ways to promote dignity and respect for all people. Parentheses, there are about eight different groups, in, and a term included in this is differing ability, 
note the term individuals with disabilities is not included by our state. In an article in t- entitled Four Disability Euphemisms that Need to Bite the Dust, both differently abled and special needs are mentioned. Arizona State University is the home of the National Center on Disability and Journalism. It's Disability Language Style Guide. Last revived August of 2021 discusses many terms as to the term special needs. It states the word special in relationship to those with disabilities is now widely considered offensive because it euphemistically stigmatized that which is different. The feeling from ASU, Arizona State University, about the term differently abled is similarly is similar and equally offensive. So school board, because it may be too difficult to make a substitution, please add an addendum to 2.1.5 SS pound three, adding individuals with disabilities to the parentheses. I suggest that the school board and or administrators write a letter to the state rejecting the state's use of offensive terminology. Okay? This terminology that, that that's this terminology that in effect weakens and undermines the civil rights of those with disabilities. Is that the motive of using the terminology? Because that terminology, if it refers to students with disabilities, is offensive. Um, and please do something about it. Um, is that it? Did you all hear me, I hope? Yes, we heard you, Dr. Pato. It's thank you so much. You have okay. seconds left if you would like to use them. No, I kind of said it. <laughs> thank okay. you very much. Thank all you right. for calling in. Appreciate it. Okay, we go back to the room. Are there any additional um, comments for first public comment? Okay, we looks like we don't have any more public comments on the line, so we will close first public comment and move on to Dr. Malash for superintendent's comments. Thank you, Ms. Stern. Uh, so we are just a little less now than two weeks away from the first day of school. In fact, 13 days before we will wake up and, and be ready for the first day, September the 6th, which is incredibly exciting. Um, we are very excited in district. We've spent the last two days with all of the administrators uh, here at the Lewis Administration Building, uh, doing some training, spending some time getting ready for the academic year, talking about programs uh, and opportunities and what's taking place uh, within our schools. Dr. Mahan, Dr. Morton, Mrs. Wethington uh, put together an incredible program for these couple of days um, that really had the, the administrators, the principals, the assistant principals, supervisors working and engaged. Um, you know, so they are incredibly excited. The buildings are just about all ready to go. Uh, a very special thank you to our custodians, our cleaners, our facilities folks, the grounds crew, the maintenance men and women uh, who work in our district. Again, often um, such thankless jobs that they have um, you know, during the course of the year to keep the buildings ready, keep the buildings going. Uh, and during the course of the summer, the work, especially with the heat that we've had during the course of the summer, these men and women have done a wonderful job preparing the buildings to be ready to go. Uh, often they are understaffed as we are continuing to look for additional cleaners and custodians to apply. So uh, we want the people to reach out and, and apply for the positions, but they do such a wonderful job. So we're incredibly thankful, incredibly thankful for them. So please make sure as schools open and you see the cleaners, you see the custodians in the building, you see our maintenance guys uh, or see the grounds crew to thank them for the work they've done uh, to keep the Cherry Hill schools ready uh, to welcome back our staff members and our students. Very excited because we will be starting uh, our new staff orientation tomorrow. Uh, we spend four days in new staff orientation. So it's on the 24th and 25th and then the 29th and 30th. Um, they are four really full days for all of our staff members. We are welcoming into the district uh, about 70 new staff members that we've hired this summer uh, who are joining us. We have a number of staff members who were hired at some point after September 1st of 2021 who will also be joining us for the training. And Ms. Adrian, did you tell us about, a, is it about 100 people or so? 
just under 100 people uh, that we'll be welcoming tomorrow morning. Ms. Stern will be joining us tomorrow morning to do a welcome on behalf of the board and the community. Uh, and I'm always very excited to see the cohort of new staff members and to spend some time with them as we talk about the why that they got into education, whether they are brand new college graduates or whether they are coming to Cherry Hill from another district or another career. Uh, so very exciting times. Many of our schools are holding uh, open houses uh, and welcoming programs for students who are transitioning, whether it's kindergartners or sixth graders or ninth graders, new students and new families to the district. There's been a number of nights that have taken place at our elementary schools. There are a couple that are going on tonight. I know one at Beck and one at, at Malberg at the Early Childhood Center. Um, we appreciate everybody that has the opportunity to get out and to see the principals and to see the buildings. That excitement just will continue to rise uh, until the 6th. So let's hope for good weather on Tuesday, September the 6th. Uh, as Liz said uh, to the students, make sure you're finishing up your summer reading. Uh, pick a book that you want to read. And if you finished your summer reading, don't hesitate to grab another book between now and the opening of school. Get that brain primed uh, so you're ready for, uh, for getting back into the routine. I will look forward to seeing everybody as we come back in, in our next board meeting and reporting on that first day of school. So... Have a good next couple of weeks. Thank you, Dr. Malash. It's nice to hear your enthusiasm in ours. Not sure that every single student shares the enthusiasm you and Liz do and Aiden. I'm not sure my kids share the same enthusiasm. Definitely working on the summer reading though, that's for sure. <laughs> okay, um, so we're gonna move on to um, our action agenda and we will start with curriculum and instruction. And Mrs. Arroyo, um, could you please move the CNI agenda? Yes, the superintendent recommends and I move the following 13.1 approval of attendance at conference and workshops for 2022-23 school year. 13.2 approval of out of district student placement for 2022-2023 school year. 13.3 approval of out of service contract with NJ Commission for the Blind and Visually Impaired for the 22-23 school year. 13.4 approval of service agreement between the Board and Epic Health Services, Avena Healthcare for 2022-23 school year. 13.5, approval of agreements for the 2022-23 school year. 13.6, approval resolution, educational services. 13.7, approval of readopting curriculum. 13.8, approval of standard orders and protocols. 13.9, approval of the fiscal impact of the professional development plan. May I have a second? Any questions? Ms. Sugars? Okay, the online voting has been open. Board members, you may cast your votes. Ms. Sugars, I need to oh, manually, manually vote so I can log in, but mm -hmm. um, yes for all. Okay. Ms. Sugars, I'll be abstaining from all of these because I was not on the board when they were discussed. Okay, other than the one abstention, we have a unanimous yes vote. Okay, and we'll move on to business and facilities and I will move that agenda. The superintendent recommends and I move the following. 14.1 approval of minutes for July 12th, 2022 special action meeting. 14.2 approval of minutes special uh, meeting board retreat executive sessions dated July 20th, 2022. Approval of meetings, I'm sorry, approval of minutes, regular meeting and executive session uh, July 26th, 2022. Financial reports 14.4, 14.5 resolution to reaward people transportation bid. 14.6, resolution for the award of transportation, 14.7, donations, and 14.8. Do I have a second? Mrs. Arroyo, any questions? And uh, Mrs. Sugars, can you please uh, take the vote? Online voting is open. Board members, you may catch, cast your votes.
Ms. Sugars, I'll again be abstaining because I was not on the board when these were discussed. Ms. Sugars, I'm yes to all. <clears throat> Other than the two abstentions, we have a unanimous yes vote. I just want to highlight um, something that a community member uh, raised earlier in public comment. Um, we had a group of students raise money to help purchase instruments um, for our to bring to give back to our district, which was just a, a, a wonderful um, way to see our students get involved, the East Musicians on Call, and they've made a donation that we just approved. So um, I just wanted to highlight that how our students are um, connecting beyond our classrooms and connecting back to our classrooms. So it's pretty neat. And Ms. Stern, I believe this is the second year that they've made a, a donation, a similar donation of a few thousand dollars um, to the district. So greatly appreciate it. I know they are continuing and they're looking forward to um, the 2022-2023 season uh, of their work. Okay, um, we move on to, um, to our human um, resources negotiations and Mrs. Stratton, um, if you would kindly move the HR agenda, please. Sure, uh, superintendent recommends and I move the following. I was right, correct? Okay. Mm -hmm. 15.1, termination of employment certificated. 50.2, termination of employment non-certificated. Appointment certificated. I mean, 15.3, appointment certificated. 15.4, appointments non-certificated. 15.5, leaves of absence certificated. 15.6, leaves of absence non-certificated. 15.7, assignment and salary change. Certificated 15.8, assignment and salary change non-certificated. Sorry, looking at names, making sure. Other compensation certificated, approval of a new job description. 15.10, approval of new job description. 15.11, first reading of policy. And 15.12, contract renewals for the SAC program. Um, and do I have a second? Mrs. Stern, any questions? Okay, Mrs. Sugars. Okay, board members, online voting is open. You may cast your votes. Mr. Sugars, I'm gonna again be a yes to all, please. Thank you. And I will again be abstaining from all, thank you. Okay. Other than the one abstention, we have a unanimous yes vote. Um, Mrs. Sugars, I do want to apologize, but um, I think in getting caught up and trying to make sure I'm on track with the whole meeting, I neglected to abstain from 13 point, sorry, 13.5 just to avoid a conflict of interest. So if you could please make a note of that, thank you. And Dr. Malash would like to make a comment. I do, thank you, Ms. Stern. I just wanna point out in the uh, termination of employment of 15.2, a retirement that's listed in there, Mrs. Arlene Tiedekin uh, will be retiring at the end of December, beginning of January. Um, Mrs. Tiedekin is the registrar uh, for us at the high school level, a position that she has held for many years uh, and has been a vital central piece in the construction of schedules and the building of schedules, getting information together as we went from a traditional schedule to the transition into the new schedule back in 2012, um, changes in schedules and how things are done. Uh, she's been a, a very important part of what's gone on uh, at all three of our, of our high school programs during her time here, uh, and she will certainly be missed. Thank you, Dr. Malash. Okay, we're gonna move on to um, policy and legislation. And Mrs. Fleischer, uh, would you please move the PNL agenda? Thank you, Mrs. Stern. The superintendent recommends and I move the following, 16.1 first reading of policies, bylaw 0163 quorum, P1511 board of education website accessibility, P2415 every student succeeds act, P3270, professional responsibilities, P5722. Then also 16.2, the second reading of policies. Bylaw 0145, board mem member resignation and removal. Bylaw 0155.1, board member participation at board meetings using electronic device. P3161, examination for cause, teaching staff. 
P3261, Dress and Grooming Teaching Staff. P4161, Examination for Cause Support Staff. P4261, Dress and Grooming Support Staff. P5111.2, Open Enrollment. P5512, Harassment, Intimidation, and Bullying. P7410, Maintenance and Repair. P8110, Attendance Areas. P8420, Emergency and Crisis Situations. P9320. And also 16.3, approval of the 2023-24 school calendar. 16.4, approval of the 2024-25 school calendar. Do I have a second? Ms. Arroyo, any questions? Seeing none, Mrs. Sugars, will you uh, please open the voting? Okay, board members, online voting is open. You may cast your votes. Mrs. Sugars, I'm a yes to all, please. And I'll be abstaining from all. Thank you. Okay, other than the one abstention, we have a unanimous yes vote. Okay, and um, the next item is strategic planning, and there are no items for um, action this evening. So we move on to uh, new business. Is there any new business? Okay, board members, is there any old business? Okay, we will move on to second public comment. This is a second public comment section during which you may comment on any topic. If you would like to speak now, please clearly state your name and municipality. We will alternate speakers here in the room between speakers here in the room and those that are online. Each speaker will be given a maximum of three minutes to speak. The timer on the screen will indicate the amount of time you have remaining. Cherry Hill is a community that values education and educational topics often bring out a passionate response. The Cherry Hill Board of Education supports a school climate in which our diversity is a source of strength and all are included. Respect is foundational in how we treat you and how you treat us and one another and how we support our administration and staff in their essential work. Please join us in practicing the utmost respect for all. And we will start with comments in the room. Rick Short, Rick Short, hello, uh, Rick Short, Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Um, first off, I want to thank the district. Well, I want to thank Mr. Avadia for replying to my email today, and I want to just read it directly what he said. I challenged the district on whether there was that we were paying uh, the vestibules at Beckman and Barton twice. And this is exactly what Mr. Avadia wrote. The monies for the Beck and Man Barton projects were budgeted to be projects were never pursued. Those monies remain in capital reserves fund and are available for other projects. The determination was made to have the main entrance enhancements included in the scope work and part of the bond referendum. So basically, um, the way I interpret this is, is that we've been double billed for the same thing. That's what I've been saying. So you're basically paying twice for the vestibules at those three schools. So he goes further on saying that when I say that, there's misunderstandings, and Dr. Malash also replied and said that um, inaccurate information. So, if that's if it's not double billing or I, I don't what what should it be called when you're paying for something twice? That's my first question. Um, and then 
uh, there were some comments made uh, by a board member back on um, January 25th of uh, 2022 at 32 minutes and 11 seconds that were quite disturbing. And I don't think they represent the board. When you say things like there's too many this race or too many of that race, it's just degrading. And I, you know, what do I say all the time? I say all the time that you guys live in this fantasy land here in Cherry Hill. There's no education. It's just 24 seven group identity theater. It continues on. Um, and then finally, you didn't answer the question about the uh, audio clap where that's being what's called um, um, suppressed under auto gating. So I don't know. I know I, I see the guy, but I don't know. Short, would you please re uh, restrain yourself to comments and stop with the histrionics, please? Just speak. Well, this isn't right. That's happening. Thank you, Mr. Short. And we now go to the line. Um, and I believe that is uh, Dr. Podowitz. My name is Jeff Podowitz. I live in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. School board and administrators, uh, were you aware that one of the leading districts for S2 changes in SFRA was the Kingsway Regional School District in Gloucester County. According to NJ Education Aid Blogspot, public record, you could find it, Kingsway Regional School District will be scheduled to receive over $20 million in direct state formula aid to education in the year 2022 to 2023. Their enrollment is 2,664 students. That's projected. If we in Cherry Hill received the same per pupil dollars Kingsway will be getting, we would receive approximately $80 million in direct state SFRA formula aid next year. Please refer to SFRA district profile, education law center. You'll see that when it comes to um, ELL percentage and free and reduced lunch percentage, we are higher. Our community moving forward will still be cheated by the S2 version of SFRA district state formula aid to education. Our administration has found a method of alternative funding. We would have to agree to a debt whose principal and interest would total over $550 million. That alone could be community crushing debt for a 20 year period. However, if you read the Cherry Hill Sun article entitled Cherry Hill Public School District to hold $363 million bond referendum, August 5th, 2022, the article states if the bond passes, work would begin at the earliest next June, I guess that makes sense, and continue for a few years. The goal would be to get into a roughly 10-year cycle for maintenance rep rep referendum. So our leaderships could continually go to the state's legal debt limit, Re renewing portions of the debt appro approximately every 10 years. It would just continue on. Again, if we got, they're getting, they're getting the equivalent of $80 million when we're getting, and we're only getting 30. I mean, that's what we deserve. And when it comes to, when it comes to at risk students, we have a higher percentage of at risk students. I don't know how much time I have left. Thank you. Dr. I just Dr. wanted to, I'm sorry. You're at the end of your time. Thank you. And we go back to the room. Any public comments in the room? Sorry, this is on. Okay. My name is Jennifer Sharman. I'm a Cherry Hill resident at um, 15 Whitman. Um, I have a senior this year, a coming senior. He's my last one um, to be graduating out of four. So um, I have, you know, a lot of invested into the school district over the years. Um, 
sorry, I will try to speak up louder. Um, I have been talking to a lot of parents um, around the neighbor Cherry Hill area, and I am speaking on their behalf as well as my own regarding the bond that's coming up. Um, there's a lot of parents out there who are very concerned um, about how this is going to affect their bottom dollar. I understand that the schools need improvement, but you're doing it during a recession and people are having difficulties buying gas, buying food, paying for bills, paying for school supplies, paying for everything that's needed to, to take care of their children. And there's a lot of people in this community who are not as well off, who you know, are struggling day by day and they do not feel that their voice is being heard and that they would really like this um, bond to be canceled and re just like re decided on a, at a later date. And they also feel as though this October 6th um, election for it is sneaky. They feel that you guys are doing it so that they most people don't even know that it's coming up and they feel that you're trying to be underhanded and that it's going to completely lessen your value as a school district. I just wanted to say that. Lastly, um, based on the comments that I've heard before too, I just want to say this, um, anyone who only sees people by the color of their skin is just, it's, it's just degrading. It's, it's just, it's racism. It's just not okay. We are human beings. We all have two arms, two legs. We have red blood in our veins, and we just need to focus on that. Stop looking at the color of people's skin. Thank you. Thank you. And now we'll go to the line to Jessica Fingerman. Hi there, Jessica Fingerman, 1764 Morris Drive. Uh, thank you so much for taking my call. Um, I had just two quick questions about the upcoming bond. Um, my first question was um, about Rosa. Uh, I know that uh, you remember me mentioning before that my son, after school one day, he was in the locker room and like the sewage came up from the from the bottom drains and so i wanted to know in the rosa plan if the um if the bond passes then uh it says that there will be plumbing addressed and i just didn't know if that also meant i guess is that sewer is that plumbing i just i didn't want you know all of these renovations to be done and then all of a sudden something wasn't taken care of and now there's it was all for nothing so to speak um, my second question uh, is in regards to the um, federal funds rate. So, you know, I know that all of us following um, what's going on with inflation and interest rates increasing and the federal fund rate increasing, um, I wanted to know how does that work with, with a proposed bond referendum? So the vote happens October 6th, hopefully it passes, and then it goes out to things are things are bid upon at, at a later date, but I just didn't know if there's a fluctuation in the federal fund rate. How does that work in terms of a bond? If they if you guys could just explain that and, and walk us through that a little bit, I would appreciate it. And those are my two questions. Thank you for calling in. Thank you. Okay. And now we go back to the room. Okay. Um, oh, we have a public comment. Hi, Dr. Panina Mintz. Um, thank you for um, taking my comment. Uh, my first I'm sorry, could you please just state your municipality? Thank you. Uh, Cherry Hill, thank you. Um, my first question is to the Board of Education. If you are aware, and um, I don't know, you may or may not be aware that the NGEA, that's the teachers unit, uh, union came up with an attack ad. I believe it's on YouTube. You can find it on parents uh, calling parents extremists. Um, my question to the board, um, if the board agrees with the NJEA, um, and if you do not agree with the NGA calling parents extremist, uh, what are you going to do about it? My understanding that a lot of the teach teachers uh, are members, Cherry Hill teachers are members of the NGA or the teachers unions, and parents are concerned um, that if the union calls parents extremist, um, you know, are the teachers thinking of them as extremists? So I need an answer from this board if you agree with the attack ad of the NGA or not. And if you don't agree with that, what are you going to do about it? Second question. Um, the 
NGA again came out with a summer program for teachers. It's a training program. Um, and that training program was conducted by the um, Institute for Radical Pedagogy. The topic of the training program for teachers was that teaching is political. Um, and I need for the Board of Ed to examine that program. I would like to know how many of Cherry Hill teachers participated in this program. And if you agree uh, that teaching is political, do you agree that politics uh, should be in our schools? I'm concerned about that. I'd like to know why is the NGA conducting such training programs? Please go to the website of the Institute for Radical Pedagogy. It is a Marxist institution. I think you should be aware of it. And I, should, I think you should please inform the public and the parents if any uh, Cherry Hill teachers participated in that training and what does it mean? What does it mean for us um, if this adoption of politics in our schools takes place? Next question is regarding the uh, comprehensive uh, sexuality education. I'd like the board to take a position to ban it. I don't think any sexual content or political content should be part of our schools. Thank you very much. Okay, we go back to the line and I do not see any hands. So I will now um, go back to the room and ask if there are any other public comments in the room. Thank you, Mark. Anne Einhorn, Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Um, the New Jersey Schools Development Authority supposedly has money. I do not know um, how that, if at all, it will affect us. So at some point, I hope we can have a report from BNF if there's any validity to that regarding Cherry Hill. So last Thursday, August the 18th, there was a rally at Crotch Farm. And I was a member of a group called Cherry Hill Collaborative, which is a grassroots organization to fight number one misinformation, particularly regarding the um, health curriculum that is currently being written. So it's very interesting that the number one brochure was sponsored by a group called Garden State Families, whose motto or mission is to protect, promote faith and culture and public policy as held by the traditional Christian worldwide. What's also interesting is the speakers that night were a congressional candidate um, for the first district who previously was a Republican is now running as an independent, a school board member candidate from Voorhees, a school board member candidate from Medford. Um, we were there to provide accurate information um, I would like everyone in this room to know in a public forum that we did not harass or intimidate the other group that was speaking that night. Um, it's been an ongoing situation for some time. There's attack upon attack upon attack. I do believe that everybody's entitled to their opinion. But when there is misinformation regarding our school district from outsiders who don't know who do not live here, I cannot, I cannot condone what they have to say. So with your permission, Ms. Stearns, and sir, the um, president tonight or vice president, I would like to hand this to you. I would like our curriculum committee to see what's being handed out um, and sponsored and paid for by the Center for Garden State Families when I'm done speaking. We need your help, students. We need to find out what New Jersey Fresh Face School is for education transparency, no left turn in education. We need the parents of Cherry Hill, New Jersey to help us, okay? Um, this is a district of all kinds, and we all know it, but I would like to see us work together. I hope that can happen, and thank you. I don't need any applause. Thank you, Ms. Einhorn. Are there any other public comments in the room? I see no more on the line. Hi, again, I'm Jennifer Sharman, Cherry Hill resident. Um, I would also like to just kind of further comment on what the woman before me spoke about. I was there at the very same rally 
I'm sorry, Ms. Herman. Um, if you have something to address the board about, please feel free. She, and not, not, she addressed the board in the same way, and I feel as though I would like but to you're, also you're share welcome to address the board. Absolutely. That, yes. Directly to the board, please. So Thank you. I'm, I am directing it to you. I'm furthering commenting on other things. But I was there, and I would like to just say that the um, the group that was there, that was uh, that was for the rally, was there just for parental voice. I just wanted to tell you my perspective, and I think you guys all should know this too, that it was a peaceful rally. Um, it was not against any one kind of person, any, um, any gender, any orientation, anything like that. It was very welcoming. Um, there was a lot of people from all different areas in New Jersey. And um, I think that it's just about families having a voice in the school district and a lot of families feel as though that their voice is not being heard and they want to make sure that at this school district is an inclusive place but also with the family's respect and dignity as well we did not feel respected and that's what we, that's what the point of the rally was for thank you thank you and we go to the line to jessica fingerman Hello again. Hope you guys are all doing well. Um, I am uh, responding. Um, well, I want to direct my. I, I'm so sorry. If you could just kindly state, you say your name and also your oh, name, sure. municipality. Thank you. So sorry. Yes, Jessica Fingerman, 1764 Morris Drive in Cherry Hill. Um, I, like a couple of the other speakers, did the event uh, last Thursday with Cherry Hill Collaborative. And I wanted the board to know that in addition to the things that that Ann Einhorn mentioned to you um, a few minutes ago, that the coordinator of that event, um, Dr. Mintz, um, she says that teachers castrate and sterilize children and that that happens in public schools. So I think that that's uh, a huge piece of misinformation that the board should be aware of, especially since this is happening right in our backyard, right by Jake's place, which is where I take my own children to play um, on the playground. So I just want to make sure that we reinforce the understanding that hate has no home here, as our PTA says, and um, for that to be reinforced by the board as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. And um, we have a public comment in the room next. Okay, Dr. so I'm going to need you. Dr. I'm, I'm sorry, um, Dr. Sorry, Mintz, I'm going to need you to wait, please, because you've already had one turn. So we'll let anyone who hasn't had a turn yet have a turn. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, go ahead, please. Thank you, Ms. Stern. Uh, Yoni Irish, Cherry Hill. Um, I wanted to first acknowledge what Dr. Lash did for Ms. Tidigan. She was around when I was a student. I made it late. I was currently at Malberg meeting new principal. Once again, wonderful hiring position and job for that. I'm really excited for the two new principals my kids will have. And she was just so much excited. It was really fun to get to see You'll get to see principals in their element when they're at board meetings. They're here as adults. But when you get to see them around the children, you really get to see them light up. And it was really wonderful to see Ms. Edwards tonight around all of her new students. And Jess, I am so excited for that. So thank you to the team who was on the hiring committee. You did a great job. Uh, second to that, I want to just thank Ms. Tegan. She was around when I was a student, and I think all my siblings were around. She's been here a very long time. Uh, it's going to be She's going to be a lot, really challenging to fill her shoes. Um, the scheduling for our district is not wasn't easy when I was a student. And it's only gotten more complicated with the block scheduling. And just really grateful. We've got a really wonderful group of support staff um, that aren't just the classroom teachers, the guidance counselors who work behind the scenes, who never really get to be shown. And she's probably one of the best prime examples of that in the district. I also want to talk about that'd be really helpful that there seems to be a mantra in the community that parents aren't involved in the process. And I have never seen that to be more counterintuitive to what actually has gone on. And in fact, over the last couple of years, I've seen this board time and time again, doing everything possible to open up the lines of communication. So many town halls um, are numerous at this point. Um, and in fact, it'd be really helpful with the Trail Tomorrow site to really put up. I think there were at least 50 plus town halls that took place regarding the bond alone, let alone we had a safety and security town hall that took place all after the last bond. So I think people just need to be reminded that there were many points of conversation. I also want to acknowledge uh, during first uh, policy readings tonight, you reviewed the new policy for student newspaper and student journalism. Cherry Hill has been a huge proponent of student voice and student journalism for many, many years, especially after Mr. Gagliardi was hired at East. And it's only gotten more and more. And I apologize to West and the Lions report. I just don't know it enough yet. Give me four more years when my kids get there. I'll know enough on that one. But just really want to be grateful that so many districts will do prior review and will shut down student voice. That has never been the philosophy here from Dr. Perry to Dr. Chapman to Dr. Bruza. When I was a student, 
always acknowledge the difficult conversations. And we saw the impact of that with East in terms of reacting to what East Side did and discussing those challenges openly. And that's what this district does, is that it addresses those challenges heads on, does not silence student voice and does everything possible to make sure that we have those challenging conversations. And no, we're not always going to agree, but we'll have a respectful conversation in the room. And it starts at the top and it really starts with the board. And I give you guys all credit for doing your best and probably the most challenging of times that I've ever seen. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and we will go to um, um, sure, go ahead, Dr. Reed. All right, I'm sorry. We, yeah, we, yeah, so we'll, yeah, we'll wait to have public comment. Thanks. So we will come back. Um, we will go to Alana Yaras on the line. Alana Yaris, Cherry Hill. Um, I also was late because I was attending the meet and greet with the new Malberg principal, Miss Edwards. And as my husband stated, um, I found her to be very personable, interacting with the children. It was amazing to see the Malberg playground full once again with children playing. Um, in looking at the agenda and listening to the meeting even though I was late I just wanted to state that I'm super happy to see color on the district calendars um I have not looked at the district calendar on my computer but when looking at on it at my phone it does not look mobile friendly for approvals um so I just wanted to make sure I didn't know if it looked differently on the computer but I just wanted to make sure that was fixed and corrected before it's um shared out with the public uh, in case there are issues because I do know that many people look on their phones and not necessarily on their computers since the phone is sometimes easier to look things up. Um, and second, I just wanted to remind you that all of the holidays that follow a lunar cycle start the evening before. Um, so for aid and um, I think Lunar New Year and any of the Jewish holidays, they start the evening before. So sometimes on the calendar, it states um, that the holiday begins on a certain day, but it's really the night before. I can only speak specifically to what I see for Passover in the 2024-2025 calendar, which actually begins on Saturday night, April 12th, and not on April 13th. Okay, that's all, thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, we go back to the room. Dr. Panina Mintz, Cherry Hill, thank you so much for giving me another opportunity to respond. I'm delighted that one of the speakers tonight brought the attention uh, to the Protect Parents' Rights Rally that took place in Croft Farm this past Thursday. You know, it is ridiculous that we even, even have to hold such a rally. Do you really need to protect parent rights? But apparently you do, because parents do not have any more rights in the schools. Parents are canceled. So who, who has the run of the schools? The NGA, your DOA, uh, DOE, um, other nonprofits that have agenda, political agendas, but parents don't have a say. And we did have a parents protect parents' rights rally specifically to inform parents about the upcoming comprehensive sexual education. And I would be absolutely happy to give you, and, and Dr. Malosh has it, but I'll, I'll be able to drop off for each one of you. And all that it is, it's the uh, DOE sexual uh, curriculum standards. And it's highlighted in yellow, each and every topic here that parents should be concerned about. And I will try to uh, have you understand that that curriculum does not mention parents anymore. There's no more the uh, word parents. Parents are eliminated and they are replaced by family members. Family members category is including parents and caregivers, okay? So there's no more parents, okay? They're referring to them to uh, as family members at this point. So they cancel parents. Moreover, they replace and they are now, the NJ State New Jersey Sex Ed Guidelines describe school staff as trusted adults with whom your children can discuss gender identity, sexual behavior, mental health issues, personal, political, and other confidential family matters that are the parents' sole authority. 
this is why we held the parents' right rally to teach them. We gave them a parent non-consent form so they can learn how to protect their children uh, with age inappropriate content, political content, sexual content. We gave them information how to protect their children uh, if they're sending them to the schools. We gave them an, uh, information how to pull their kids out of school because the schools currently are not safe for their children. You are the board of end members. Dr. Malosh, you are the superintendent. You have not taken care of the children. That's why parents are concerned and you are, you are refusing to ban the comprehensive sexual, sexual education that is coming up. And we're asking you, stop this. Please protect the children. Okay, and we'll go to the line with, um, I believe I believe it's Dr. Potowitz again. And, and, and if you could kindly identify yourself and you, your municipality. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jeff Potowitz. It is me again. Thanks for letting us to speak again. Uh, I'm going to bring up something I brought up in the last meeting, but a different article. This article was written in 2021, June 11th, and it's entitled, I am not ashamed. Disability advocates, experts implore you to stop saying special needs. It was in USA Today. It says, most experts and advocates vehemently oppose the term special needs and believe we need to do limit eliminate it from our vernacular the article this article also mentions an article that i mentioned in the last meeting all right by Do and where dr morton gernsbacher was the lead author and it was published in 2016 cognitive research principles and implications a very scholarly article that special needs should be removed from our vernacular that term instead what we got was all right special needs in parentheses ieps 504s and ell well ell doesn't automatically make you special needs period it doesn't the ell category does not belong there in fact it is derogatory to say that because for 504, children with 504 and IEPs, it is derogatory to use that term also. Disabilities is, is okay to use that term. This article has other names. Dr. Gernsbacher's article has another game, but you, you just, just went right through it and you think that's fine. I'm surprised that the organization that did your survey thought it was fine to use the term special needs. It is not a proper, proper term, just like the term that I mentioned the last meeting. So you can reread that article by Dr. Gernsbacher. You could read this article and you can you remove that term from the Cherry Hill School District's vernacular. It's not me. I'm reading you these articles. And I read you a scholar. I talked about a scholarly article last time. Okay, uh, again, and take out ELL from special needs, unless you all believe ELL students are, quote, special needs. Really, I, children with IEPs and 504s are not either. Typically, they're students with disabilities. Anyway, thank you very much for letting me talk again. Bye. Okay, then we go back to the room. Uh, Rick Short, 1002 Chelton Parkway. To continue on with the sex ed discussion tonight, I don't know, not many people in their right mind would possibly believe between a five-year-old and a seven-year-old. You have to be kidding me. This is in section 2.12, whatever it is, it's there. It's, it's under the recommendations. This is for a five-year-old. Now, five-year-olds should just learn, um, excuse me, a seven-year-old should just learn how to add twice, maybe, possibly. Let me read this to you. This is, this, is, this is wonderful. Discuss the range of ways people express their gender and how role stereotypes may limit behavior. Are you kidding me for a five to seven-year-old to understand this? This is just craziness. Like, you know, I've called it before. Uh, remember good old Crazy Eddie from uh, back in the uh, 90s? Crazy Eddie. This is like 
crazy. And people have to start calling it crazy because it is crazy to expect a five to seven year old to understand something like this. They are supposed to be able to add at seven years old, add and subtract in one line, not understand gender theories. It's insane. And it keeps going and it's got to stop somewhere. Okay, uh, looks like we have nobody else on the line, so um, we will close public comment and move on to superintendent comments. Thank you, Ms. Stern. Uh, just to go through with the comments um, that came in, Dr. Potowitz, uh, thank you for your comments and, and for sharing your perspective and the, the references to the articles that you mentioned. Uh, Ms. Mallory will be bringing up the topic with the CPAG, with the Special Ed Parent Advisory Group. Uh, she will engage in conversation um, with what you brought up and, and uh, your concerns. In terms of uh, the new health curriculum, so we have not yet adopted the new health curriculum. Uh, there will be an update. There was an update at the beginning of this month at the CNI curriculum meeting. Um, we take the standards that are presented. We have a team of experts and the professionals who uh, are charged with the instruction and what goes on, you know, in, in schools uh, that to then interpret the standards, prepare them in lessons, prepare them into curricula. Uh, there'll be an update next Tuesday night at the CNI committee meeting. Uh, and then we'll ask the board to adopt the curriculum in September um, when we reconvene as a school board. Um, but after it's presented, after the information is shared, um, parents will still have the opportunities we've mentioned uh, many times and the opportunity that has existed within district for years, uh, if they choose to opt their children out the family life curriculum, they have that right. Uh, that has always been a parent's right. They will continue to have that right. Uh, we'll share that information. We share that very formally with parents at the beginning of each academic year. So that will continue to be there. Um, Dr. Mintz, you, you brought up lots of different topics. Um, we, you know, NJEA is a is a professional association that's independent of the school district. Um, the district has no control or oversight over NJEA. Um, we do not monitor what our members do um, during the summer months or professional development or opportunities uh, in which they are engaged. Um, that's a question and a conversation, uh, honestly, that you should probably take up with, with somebody else other than the school board. That's not within the area uh, that the school board has responsibility or within their purview of control. I can, I can tell you that at our board meetings, um, so that we have two folks from the technology department that are with us at the board meetings, um, you know, who help to manage all the technology that goes on in the room, uh, what takes place uh, in terms of the broadcast, uh, and then ultimately, uh, with the recording that then is posted on our on our uh, YouTube page, um, our technology folks do not edit anything out for the sound. Um, they they certainly have way more to do than to try to figure out how to try to edit out uh, applause or yelling or noise uh, or anything like that. Um, so to state that that the videos are being changed uh, or that information is a complete falsehood, that's inaccurate, that's incorrect. That's not the truth. Uh, that has not happened. That will not happen. Uh, there are no ambient microphones that are in this room uh, that we use. So they do not pick up additional noise uh, that goes through. We use the, the speaking microphones that are turned on and off uh, as folks speak, uh, but we do not edit uh, any of the recordings to remove applause um, or anything that goes uh, on like that. Uh, we absolutely want people to know that the vote is on October 6th. Um, if people have questions, we are happy to meet with people as individuals. We are happy to meet with people as small groups. We're happy to meet with community organizations. Uh, if people feel that they have not been heard, um, we have provided uh, numerous opportunities during the course of uh, more than the last 12 months um, with visits to all the schools. We've been out to see community organizations. Mr. Avadi has said at the table as board president um, that he will go out and meet with groups. I will always go out and meet with groups. Uh, we can have um, you know, the representative from the architects, you know, to be there. Mrs. Sugars can join us. The questions about the monies. We are always happy to meet with people. Um, we are relatively easy to find. Um, you can always reach out to us directly at the district. You can reach out to Mrs. Wilson. Uh, and we are always willing to set something up if people have questions uh, or if they want to discuss what's in the referendum. But we tried to provide numerous opportunities in many different formats, uh, both in 
person at all of the schools uh, in electronic format. We did town hall meetings on a larger scale that were done where people could be there in person or they could be there online. So if folks have questions they would like to discuss, please have them reach out directly to us. We'd be more than happy to meet with anybody, uh, again, individually, uh, small groups, large groups, uh, as we get closer to October 6th. And we hope that everybody is talking about October 6th. You'll see signs at all the schools. There'll be mailings that'll go out throughout the community uh, to let people know uh, information about the referendum. There is a website that's available that shares information about the referendum. We'll have a full day of voting from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. at all the regular voting sites. Uh, information will come out from the county. Uh, there'll be vote by mail. All of that will be available. Uh, and we absolutely want people to focus uh, on this referendum in and of itself. We do not want it to get lost in the general election. We believe that it's that important to our school district, to our community. It's a once in a generation opportunity to be able to make a difference. And we want folks to be as informed as they possibly can be uh, with what's taking place with it. Um, in terms of, uh, there was a question or a statement that was brought up about um, work being done in uh, the front of schools or about work being billed twice, uh, spending money twice. And, and it's just as straightforward. Um, and I did write back and say that it was inaccurate. Uh, it was a falsehood with, with what you put out. Um, yes, money was budgeted a couple of years ago for work to be done. Um, the board and the district solicited bids. Uh, those bids were never awarded. So the money that was budgeted was never spent. We were never billed for it. Work was never done. We never received a bill. The money never left the district to pay somebody to do the work. Uh, the work still needed to be done. The budget was built this year. Money was put into the budget so that the work could be done. Um, and then when that work is finished, we will receive a bill and we will pay for it. It's, it's honestly not to oversimplify the fact of it, but last night, my, my, one of my daughters and I went to BJ's. We had to do some shopping. There were a couple of items that were left on the list for us that BJ's did not have. They literally was not there, I think because it was the end, the, the Monday, the sale was ending. Um, so what we were supposed to buy, a couple of the items we could not buy. It was on the list. I knew how much I was supposed to be, paid, be paying for it, but I couldn't buy it because it wasn't there. So when I left the store, even though I planned to buy it, and in my mind, I had allocated that money, I did not spend that money. At some point, I will go back to the store when they have those items because we still need them for the girls go back to school. And then once I get those items, I will pay for them. I will not pay for them twice, though, because when I originally intended to purchase them, they didn't have it. So because they didn't have it, I didn't get the goods or the services. So the money didn't come out of my pocket to pay them for it. And again, I don't want to oversimplify it, but it's as, as straightforward as that uh, in terms of, of what, excuse me, of what it was. I think Ms. Stern, I think that is, that's all of it. Okay, thank you, Dr. Malash. And I'm going to make a motion to adjourn our meeting. Do I have a second? Mrs. Stratton, all in favor? Thank you very much. Motion carries.